Hi, hey, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Shelly and today we're going to have a massive, massive wrap up. <laughs> yes, that was kind of dramatic, but also not really. So I'm very, very behind on my wrap up, my monthly wrap ups. So um, I figure we just, you know, do three months in a go. But I'm gonna try to do it as like fast as possible because I'm pretty sure there's like 40 books and um, that's a big ass wrap up. So we're gonna go to October. I have my little handy book journal notebook thing. So we're gonna go over to October, which I've <laughs> I've not really filled out anything in it yet. But yeah, so some for some of these books that are videos are already out there, so I'm gonna, you know, kind of sum up and refer to said video instead of, you know, going through all of it again. Just has a lot of books. <laughs> so in October, I listened to all the I Heart books by Lindsay Kelk, and there is a video for that because it was uh, one of my project audio books. So you know, is that side that side one of the side? I think it's that side. Either way, link in the eye bubble and down in the description. Then I also read The Invisible Life of Adela LaRue by V.E. Schwab, which I'm pretty sure I did a reading vlog for, so click, click somewhere along the lines. Um, I really enjoy that book, by the way, so thumbs up. And then we have The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson, which is the first in the Mistborn, um, Mistborn era, era one? the first Mistborn book anyway. Um, I got sucked in. So it's not the first Brandon Sanderson book I've read. Uh, so I've read um, a couple of before, um, but it is um, a good time. So basically metals, magic, twists and turns. You do not know what's going to happen. And then you get your head blown off. That's a very weird. <laughs> that's a very weird explanation of that book, and it's not really accurate either. But it's a very good book, so I would recommend reading Brandon Sanderson books. But you know, try to check out like reading orders and follow that because it's gonna make a lot more sense to you. I'm pretty sure. I'm kind of following one, and um, yeah. Either way. And then we have the Nevermore books. Uh, so I read book one, two, and three, which was Nevermore, Wondersmith, and Hollow Pox, all by, Jex all by Jessica Townsend. Uh, I had a very good time reading these. These are also in a reading vlog. Um, but yeah, I do recommend uh, going for those books if you want to have a good time, a good middle grade time full of magic and adventures and giant animals, talking animals, and they're called other things, but yes, good time to be had. Um, <laughs> I'm really speeding through these. Okay, so then we have Zodiac by Romina Russell, which was our October pick of the month for the Chaos Court. So it was October. Yeah, it was October. Wow. I kind of liked it. It was a very, very YA book, so the other guys did not enjoy it or, you know, DNF'd it, kind of. Um, it was very, very, <laughs> it was uh, very, very much a YA sci-fi adventure. Um, I do want to pick up the three other books. I'm pretty sure there's four in that series. Um, because I want to see how it all ends up. And I'm pretty sure Tom is bringing out my Christmas decorations again. <laughs> I just put them away. Um, yeah, so basically that book is very much based on the zodiac sign. So we're all out in space and it's... Yeah, this, this girl kind of gets elected leader for her sign. Her sign, her planet. It's, it's hard to explain. It's um, it's a science sci-fi YA book. 
it's a good time if you like YA, I'm not gonna lie. Let's see, let's see. So then we have King of Scars and Rule of Wolves by Lee Badugu. So that's the um, third in the Kinda Grisha verse um, era. No, <laughs> the, uh, the Grisha verse. Um, so in this one, we follow uh, Nicholas. Nick Nicholas? No, we follow Nikolai, um, which we meet in the second Shadow and Bone book. In that series oh this is so confusing um and a couple of different other characters so in both king of scars and rule of wolves we are following like two main plot lines and they don't really make much sense either apart or together because they don't really mesh does that make sense um and it's quite obvious when reading the book that, well books, uh, that it's very much a the fans wanted more and so Libodogo came out and gave the fans more. Um, the only thing is that um, had these plot lines been like their own book it would not have held up uh, and it's so obvious and it doesn't even make sense for them together in the books. Um, so yeah it's a good time getting back into the old characters you kind of know and love most of them well a lot of them but they kind of fail they kind of fail to bring what the other books brought like the shadow and bone and six of crows duology trilogy and duology i was a bit disappointed there because when i first started reading king of scars um the beginning is very exciting it's like is this a werewolf book? <laughs> um, which it kind of is, in a way. Uh, only, not really. Yeah, don't listen to me. Um, yeah, sad times. But there you go. And then we have the Divergent series. So I listened to Divergent, Insurgent, Legion, and then the collection, the novella question. The novella question. Oh my goodness! The <laughs> Jesus, the novella collection um, four. <laughs> it was a good time. I do prefer reading them physically, but also they those that series. It doesn't really hold up to the times that change, um, sadly. Um, but I do really like that series. Um, it holds a special part in my. It holds a special place in my heart. Uh, but. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely prefer physically over audio, but also there is a video for that. <laughs> and then I read The Longest Holiday by Paige Toon. So in this one, we follow one of the characters we've met in a previous book, um, which was a very much a side character we didn't really see much of in said book. Um, but in this one, uh, she has her own story and we kind of get to know her in a different way so in the previous light we saw her and she was kind of a bitch and in this one we kind of get to understand why she was seen as the bitch really um so basically what's her name she has a name but i've forgotten so she kind of goes on a holiday that doesn't really end <laughs> um she kind of needs a break so she goes on a holiday with some friends and they go back home but she stays and she meets this dude of course she does and yeah yeah she kind of you know starts over and finds herself again it's a very cute rom-com and then i read kiss me first by lottie Moga. Maka? Ma I'm not really sure how to pronounce that name, I'm not gonna lie. Um, so this is a, such a weird book. Uh, so basically, the girl in the book, forget her name as well, it's been a while, and it didn't really stick with me. Anyway, the girl in the book, she, um, she's going through something, so basically she gets, like, hired 
uh, to impersonate another person online just to like make sure well for said person's family to uh, still believe she's alive and while this person goes and commits suicide um, it's a whole online kind of a thing and uh, she kind of ends up going after and looking for this um, this other person it's very stalkerish uh, because she kind of falls in love with um, a old flame of this person and it's like ugh, creepy um, she even goes to the extent that like she goes and meets um, this man I have so much hair on my face thank you Tom it gets very creepy very stalkerish and very mental health bad slide as a book it was written decently uh it wasn't badly written considering it's i'm pretty sure it was one of the books i got for a pound and um i'm pretty sure i got those books for a pound because they all kind of suck uh at least most of those books have not been great um as far as the writing in this book it was decent it was very much like you flowed through it all but the theme of it all creepy <laughs> Um, but yeah, I guess we all gotta learn somehow. <laughs> and then I went and read Heartless by Marissa Meyer. So this is a, um, a Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland uh, retelling, well, like, like her prequel to before she became um, the Red Queen, the Queen. <laughs> um, and you kind of just, you're kind of rooting for her to get her happily ever after. But because you know it's a prequel to how she became that, that queen you do not like. Um, you kind of know it's going to, it's all going to end badly. Which kind of sucks for the sad character because you kind of just she just wants to have a bakery. She doesn't want to be queen. She she just wants to go have a bakery and bake all day long. I mean, let her bake all day long for cry out loud. Um, so she goes through these waves before you know eventually going off the edge, as it were. Um, and I felt so bad for her. All she wanted was just ah oh, bake and have her own one true love. But alas, that was not to be. I really liked um the book. Um I just wish it had a bit more happier ending, but at the same time you know who she's becomes, so you know it's not gonna be great. Um, but it's it's good ending as far as that goes. It's not a happy ending, but it's a good ending. And um, yeah. And then I read The Time of My Life by Cecilia O'Hearn. So let me think. This I'm gonna have to look this one up. Oh, so in this one, <clears throat> basically, um, this character meets her life so life um in this book is a person that just like knows everything um so <laughs> basically life uh this dude is trying to steer her in the right direction um by like making her make the right decisions um so she's very much against it to begin with because um her family has kind of set her up to do this thing and she's like uh why so it's like an intervention and um yeah it's not it's not great uh, it takes her a while to like warm up to life um <laughs> and uh, once she gets there it's, it's it's a very like hot sappy kind of a funny deal but also the book is way bigger way longer than it kind of needed to be but I guess Cecilia Hearn has a tendency to write really really long rom-com books um it is definitely one of my more favorite ones of hers but yeah also very long for 
what it is. And uh, moving on to a Bad Choices by Lucy Vine. So I kind of started a reading vlog for this but it kind of ended badly and I don't know what happened to the rest of it, I'm not gonna lie. Um, so that never really ended up happening. <laughs> um, so we kind of go like back and forth in this book so we kind of we're kind of in the present where I was like so certain that one because we follow two girls and I was so certain that in the present it's like we're at the other girl's funeral or something like that um I'm not gonna say if we are or if we aren't that is something for you to find out if you want to read the book uh but kind of we go back and forth um in present and in the past and kind of um where they meet and where they like fall apart and like whether the friendship falls apart and they find their way back together and and you know how friendship works it's it's a bit of a going back and forth kind of a thing um i mean it is called bad choices so you can expect bad choices to have been made at more than one point i think um being a Lucy Vine book, it's, it's so funny. She just, she just oozes comedy and rom-com comedy, like the, like the very satirical kind of a deal. Um, she's just, she needs to write more books, honestly, because yes. And then I read Secrets and Seashells, uh, Rainbow Bay by Ali McNamara. So, Mara? Mara. <laughs> so, in this one, um, we follow this mum. She's a single mum um, and she has this little boy. And she kind of, <laughs> she kind of inherits a, a castle. Is it a castle? She inherits a very, very big yeah let's say castle and um i mean she's a bit down on her luck she's not really knowing where she's gonna like find and ends meet so she's like okay then i'll just uh go there and see what the deal is what what will happen um so she ends up like restoring the place and getting like because it's a place where people come to have tours and stuff so she ends up uh, restoring the place and opening it up for more people and uh, even like building a whatchamacallit a little <laughs> a little tea house um, in one of the like out out buildings they had there um, and there's like ghosts and it's haunted and there's love to be had yes Ali McNamara did it again with this book honestly yes and then we have The Switch by Beth O'Leary. Um, so in this we follow like, uh, they are like, is this a great aunt or something? They are related in some way, shape or form. Um, so it's an older one and a younger one and they kind of like switch places from like out in the country to um, central London and so forth. Um, and like they're dead just trying to find themselves trying to find love so yeah yeah <laughs> um i it took me such a long time to actually get into the book um it wasn't really my cup of tea to begin with it took a long time for me to get actually into the book and actually into the story of it all um because most of the book I was like oh is this worth it um it ended up having a very cute ending so I was pleased with that but also I probably could have not have read this book and still be um happy about that um but I read it it's fine we're moving on to Hope and Happiness and Bluebell Wood by Ali McNamara another Ali McNamara book. So in this one we follow uh, this lady who kind of takes herself away from the busy busy city life and uh, rents a cottage out in no man's land and 
adopts a dog <laughs> along the way. Uh, yeah, she's just trying to hide out and it's not going the best, let's say, uh, this hiding out. But she does eventually find herself. It's a cute book, but not one of my faves of Ali McNamara's, but definitely uh, one for the road. Um, I don't really have much to say about it because I kind of don't remember it as well as other books. And then I read uh, This Wicked Fate by Kayleen Bayron, which is the second book in the This Poison Heart duology. What's her name? Brie? Something. Um, she, in the first one, um, she kind of like finds out she's inherited this uh, like old family house because she's adopted. Um, so she doesn't like know her um ancestors and stuff and uh, all of a sudden this uh, lawyer solicitor comes up and uh, says like well you've inherited this mansion of a building and everything that goes with it um so she and her two mums they go move there um like just as you do apparently for Brie to sort of like find herself um so Brie has this ability she's like able to um make plants grow and all that jazz <laughs> um and apparently that's something that's uh that runs in the family not the adoptive family the ancestral family so in the second book we follow along and we kind of go on this adventure and trying to save lives and uh, end certain history and so on so i enjoyed the first book a lot more that it was a lot more intrigue in the second book it felt like we were just kind of trying to end it all um there was a lot of adventures don't get me wrong it was a lot a lot of fun and there was <laughs> like some not really murder scenes but close enough and we meet the gods and well some gods and it's kind of intertwined with greek mythology so we have that going for us as well um i felt the second book felt a bit rushed like we were trying to end a story whereas it could have maybe instead just been one thick book instead of two but i did enjoy myself it was a very quick read and it was lovely and then the last book I read in um, January, no, in October, was Never Let Me Go by Kasu Ishiguro. So I saw this movie um, based on this book years and years ago. I loved it, but also cried my eyes out watching it. And after I'd finished watching it, I was like, this is a book? Okay then. So I kind of picked up the book. Well, I bought the book. I didn't read a book. I read the book now. So, <laughs> so the book, from what I remember of the movie, the book follows along, or the rather the movie follows the book very, like, almost to the page. It's been a couple of years, but that's what I, that, that's what I felt. Um, the book... Oh, it's so beautiful, uh, but also so, so sad. Oh, I don't even know how to say this. So basically, it's about these, like, kids growing up. They, they're kind of in this, like, boarding school environment kind of a deal, but not really. Um, so they kind of, like, I don't want to say bread, but more or less, they, they are kind of bred to give body parts to other people, which is just weird. But there you go. Um, so as they grow up, when they become like, I guess fully developed, <laughs> they start, um, well, when, when it's needed. I don't really know, I don't, I don't really understand that part, but they sort of go through operations. So you will have, um, so the main character we follow, she grows up to be um, a carer rather than a donor. And so we follow her along uh, her caring um, journey. But, um, and then kind of how she reconnects with um, her childhood love. 
as it were. It's so sad and depressing, but also so lovely. Oh, I don't know what to say about this book. It's a hard one. It's one of those heart hitters where you're like, people suck because basically, yeah, people suck. And it's the people that are like, it's kind of like it's the government against the people in a way, but not really. Um, oh, it's so hard to explain, but it's it's a lovely book, but also it will make you cry. Uh, if it doesn't make you cry, you probably have no heart. I'm joking. And then we are moving up to a November, which I only read three books. And and yes, I did read 30 books in October, if anyone's keeping count. But in November, I only read three books. So we started off with The Demon World by Sally Green. So that's the uh, second book in the Smoke Thieves series. So The Smoke Thieves... <sighs> It's one of those fantasy books where there's this kingdom and there's so many characters you need to keep track of and um, basically there's this smoke, um, there's this demon smoke, it's smoke from demons so basically when the demons die they kind of ooze out this smoke and this smoke um, it gives the like inhaler certain abilities that can make them stronger like faster and all of those things um, but it's it's also a drug so it's not good for you in the end <laughs> in the the second book we kind of follow along where this smoke is kind of being used to start a war yes because why not so there's these bad kings and good kings and somewhere in between kings and people are killing each other and trying to, you know, gain the whole world, basically. Um, I really enjoyed the second book. It took me a long time to get into the first one, uh, probably because I have such a bad time. Well, not bad time. I have a hard time um, following along too many characters that's like way too many things happening um, and it does take me quite a bit to get into those kinds of books but I do kind of enjoy and I do kind of end up enjoying those in the end so I that's why I keep reading them um, so yeah I enjoyed the like last bit of the first book and then I enjoyed the second book a lot more. Uh, I did start the third one uh, which is the last one but I kind of ended up putting that one down which can happen. And then I read Chosen Ones by Veronica Roth so apparently this book was supposed to have been um, a duology of sorts um, but then something ended up not happening and that second book ended up not being written. I don't know what happened there. However, um, having read the book, um, it ends where it's supposed to end. If there's more books after that, you're going to ruin the whole story. So basically what it is, it's like the end of the world. Uh, there's these kids at some point in their lives, like 12 years old, they were chosen as the potential chosen one to like save the world so there were like several potential ones they were trained to then um stop this bad guy and uh that's what happened and one of them kind of was the chosen one um but we are starting the story like 10 years after said events um where they supposedly had to save the world and all that um, but then, so they're like, like these super famous people that save the world because apparently that's the kind of world they're living in. But then something end up, ends up happening and they end up being like pulled into a alternate reality where the like the bad things are still happening and they didn't really have any chosen ones in said um, reality. So... The, these chosen ones from the, their their life. <laughs> this is so weird. They sort of get pulled in, and now they have to save the world again. And they're like, "Well, we did this shit. 
just leave us leave us alone let us live our lives so there were a lot of bits I mean don't go from my explanation because I'm terrible at explaining things but um, there were some things in the story that was kind of missing um, but all in all it was a good time um, and definitely just a standalone and not a um, continue this on because um, it's kind of a they ride out into the sunset kind of an ending if, and if you put more stuff after that you're just gonna ruin what was previously a good time um yeah definitely not the best story in the world but still a good time and he's read as well so i mean win-win and the last book of november i read was a babel or babel or mini baby bells that i have started calling it because the babel babel thing is confusing my brain so yes by R.F. Kwan, by the way. First up, starting this book, there is this, like, um, is it, like, an author's note or something like that? Anyway, the author has written a, like, this is a work of fiction, yada, 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 so on and so forth. This is not, like, the real depiction of Oxford, because that's where we mainly are set. Um, and yes, there is no Tower of Babel, Bubble whatever we want to call it um but it would be kind of cool but still yeah <laughs> so and then there's this map and i was like this is not oxford <laughs> um that was my like introduction to the book um so what's his face what's his face what's his name so we start this story following what's his name um when he's like saved from his like dying family who's dying from I don't know cholera one of the bad decisions one of the thingamajigs you don't really want to get and um which will kill you so he's like saved from that from this by this like mysterious man who comes and just takes him from his com home country of China somewhere <laughs> wow so good at this uh and brings him back to england um where he's then like raised to basically yeah become this translator dude um which he then does he after growing up and um, with multiple uh tutors and stuff uh he does go off to oxford where this is like strange dude by the way is a professor um so it's not like <laughs> this was so hard um and he goes to this mini baby bell tower <laughs> and uh, where he basically is a translator so the whole book is this like it's magic but it's not magic so they use the translations and stuff and work the translation with silver and that's kind of what makes the magic and uh, they use these like silver bars to to for many many very different things from all everything from like healing like sickness to like making your garden be full bloom in all seasons of the year <laughs> um and yeah it's 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 weird um but yeah this book is a very very hype one and i do definitely see why it is um i really enjoyed it it was a very thick book um i did have a hard time actually finding the spots because there's a lot of footnotes in uh, in the text and i had a hard time finding these little markings for said footnotes so any time i'd finish a page and there was a footnote i had to like look it up yeah so that's my complaint the footnotes markings were um, hard to find and the chapters were super ass long but other than that really good book and um there's so many like hidden meanings and depths to it it's like 
whoa, mind blown. But it did also make me really, really want to read uh, R.F. Kwan's uh, other books, especially The Puppy War. Um, do they have more books in the Poppy War series? I don't know, but like future books and stuff because I'm sure um, they're gonna write more books. I just have this feeling, you know? <laughs> well, so moving on to December because this is a long ass video. I read uh, the Christmas Auras, the Christmas Auras and the Winter Witch, and the Christmas Auras and the Naughty List, all by Tom Fletcher, which is book one, two, and three of the Christmas Auras series, if you didn't really realize that. Um, so this is basically Christmas, dinosaurs, what else do you need? It's such a good time, and also the first one has a musical edition of it, so if you want to listen to, like, songs that Tom Fletcher created as well, um, with the book, to the book, alongside the book, one of those, um, it's a good time. It's got all that Christmas vibes, honestly, and, uh, I mean, who doesn't like Christmas and dinosaurs? Then I read The Night Circus, which was, um, uh, December pick of the month for the Chaos Court and also um, so I have two copies here so this one and this one this one Katie has annotated for me and this one Val has annotated for me so we basically decided that we would annotate the said book for each other so we did that and I really enjoy the the, the Christmas horse. Yes, I enjoy that one as well. Uh, the Night Circus. So the main reason for me wanting to read The Night Circus was after having read uh, The Starless Sea earlier in September, I believe. And because uh, it's <laughs> the same author, if you didn't realize. I'm just being very cheeky now. So I kind of wanted to see more of Erin Morgenstern's um, books her writing and i mean it doesn't disappoint i did feel like the night circus was a lot easier to follow along as far as like what it's about but also um uh, the the whole <laughs> there's so much like to it that's like i'm not sure this makes any sense but also it's a very good time and good vibes and all that and yeah it was a lot easier to follow along what's happening. I'm not sure which of the two books is my favorite so far, but I like it. I want to read more of Erin Morgenstern, so Erin Morgenstern, please write more books than just one every like 15,000 years. Thank you! <laughs> and then I read The Christmas Pig by She Who Will Not Be Named. <laughs> and it kind of makes me sad to say this, but it was a very fun book. And just the fact that she writes books, she writes good books, she knows how to write a good book, damn it. And I don't want to promote this book, but also it was funny. <sighs> so basically it's about this boy who has this favorite pig and said pig gets thrown away and uh, destroyed really and he gets a replacement pig um, which is then called the Christmas pig um, and they go on a kind of a mission to find um, his previous pig who was called something else I think it was called DP for short I don't know. Um, anyway, um, so they go on this mission into like the lost toy world and so they go into this world basically. It's a fantasy story. Of course it is. It's a good time and I don't like to say that but it is. Moving on, moving on, moving on. Okay, so we are moving on to the Christmas Wish by Yes, that's the title. By Lindsay Kelk. Oh my god. If you like um, Groundhog Day style with Christmas themes, you will love this book. And also rom-coms because it's a rom-com. Yes. <laughs> um, it's very much 
yeah, it basically, uh, she relives Christmas Day uh, a good couple of times, not as many as Bill Murray does in Groundhog Day, but still a good few times, and she's trying to figure out why, and um, yeah, I, and during that time she learns a lot about her family and about herself, and I think that's kind of what was missing, uh, like, in the beginning of it all, but good time! Go read it! It's so good! And for the very, very last book of the year, which I finished on New Year's Eve, thank you very much, I read um, The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. Now, this book, this series, has taken me a good couple of tries to actually get a hold of them. And yeah, it's not... So, <laughs> the book isn't life-changing. But it is a good time, and I get why so many people love it. Uh, so it's not gonna like alter my life view or anything, but it's a good time. I just wish I could have read it sooner. Thank you, universe. Um, I am very excited to continue on with said series, so uh, yeah. <sighs> okay, so this is a very, 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 very long video and I hope I can finish this before the thing imaging ends and I have to do a whole nother clip. So, um, yes, thank you so much for watching. I hope it has been semi-coherent and I shall see you all next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.